welcome back to the Club Innovators Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Bradburn. And with us is a frequent guest, someone who needs no introduction, uh, Melissa Hansen of melissahansen.com. And obviously her various other marketing, um, you know, escapades that she does. She's very well known in our uh, our industry. So we're happy to have you back on, Melissa. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited that we finally had time to get together. It's been a whirlwind of a couple of weeks. So I'm excited that we're that we're here. Yeah. So what Melissa is referring to is we were actually going to shoot this episode last week. Uh, the hurricane came through Florida here. I live in North Florida. And of course, it knocked out my power the entire Friday that we were going to record. At one point, it popped back on. I texted Melissa. I was like, all right, we're good to go. And then it immediately shut back off. So I was really embarrassed. I had to say, like, we're going. We're not going 100 times. But here we are a week later. We're going to get it done, right? Yeah. We're excited. We're ready to dive in. <laughs> so you recently went to the Inbound Marketing Conference by HubSpot. It was in Boston, was it? Yes, Boston. <laughs> Love that city. Yes, it was um, my second time attending this conference. Um, and just such I mean, three incredible days, eight hours um, of education. And it was just so exciting to kind of get outside of the industry. And I loved just taking a moment to digest that and bring it back into how we can use that in hospitality. Yeah, I think this is an important thing. And for most people listening, you probably don't know my background. I was a teacher for seven years before I got into this industry. But the ability to go out, take a break, like you're saying, learn something new, or just listen to different viewpoints of people in different sectors of the business. And then you get those ideas. And you're like, oh, I, I think I could take that home. That that would work for us. And I think that's such a cool thing. So excited that you're doing that. I definitely encourage you, if you're listening to this, you're a membership sales director, you're any, anything really in the golf industry or the private club industry, go find these conferences and seek them out and go to them. They're, they're great. If anything, just to reset the batteries, right, Melissa, like yeah. it, you just take a deep breath, go learn something new and then come back. Yes. Um, so you sent me a couple of these topics. We're going to go through them. So, you know, the first question is, you know, the digital experience is changing and customers are expecting more during their search process. You know, what are we doing to enhance that experience? So they shared a very interesting statistic with us, um, which I'll share with the audience. And they shared with us that buyers are spending 50 to 70% of their decision-making process gathering their information independently before ever reaching out to a sales representative, which is obviously in our space, a membership director. Yep. So that was an eye opener to me that, you know, 50 to 70% of their decision-making process was taking place before, as a membership, we even had that opportunity to connect with them. So the point there was how important having just the most robust digital experience is because buyers are making that decision. Um, and so I think the biggest thing that hit home, you know, that is that, um, you know, the first impression when we're talking about a prospective member is going to be your digital impression. Yep. Um, whether that's your website, whether that's your social media, maybe all of that, um, you know, that's their first impression. And so I feel like when I work with so many clubs across the United States, um, you know, websites are outdated. They're not sharing a lot of information because as being in the private club industry, we oftentimes want to keep that information private. Um, but I think it is very important to kind of get as much information out there as we can. Yeah, it's such a good point. A couple of things I want to touch on here. First, that's it's a millennial thing, right? I, I'm a millennial. Uh, I know you are. And it's like, look, I don't go to a restaurant unless I can look at pictures of it online and read reviews. That's just the way I am. I'm exactly what you described. I want to collect as much information as possible then make a decision on whether to do something or not. And that's what people are doing. And the second thing is, your website, and, and someone said to me the other day, they said, listen, we're building this website, not as a traditional website, but it's it's a brochure website. And I went, ooh, that's a really, really good term there. Because that's what it is for private clubs. It's a brochure website. Yes, there's functionality and there's some of them, there's member stuff on the backside and all that, but your public facing website is your brochure to the everyday person. And so like you said, if it's not updated, the color scheme isn't good. It looks like it's from you know the 90s. People are turned off by this. Why would I pay a bunch of money to go to a club that looks like they can't even update their website once every five years or 10 years or, or more, which is scary. So 
I'm right there with you. It's like, take the time to do these things. It's a representation of who you are in the industry. Absolutely. And I feel like um, one of the things that we've been doing that has been really beneficial for us, um, I know you and I have chatted about a little bit before, is gated content. Um, so I love gated content. Um, I love at least offering the prospective member an opportunity to download more on our website, whether that's the club calendar, which yeah. when you think about when a prospective member goes on a tour, when they actually get in there, the first thing they ask for is they want to see the calendar of events. That's what they yeah. want to see. So if you're offering them that opportunity within your digital experience on your website, but you are putting that behind the gates where you're having to ask for that information, um, their first name, last name, their email, and that can be fed into your database. I feel like it's a win-win because the prospect is getting the information that they're looking for, but then you as a marketer and a sales director, you're able to then drip and continue to follow up with that person. Yeah, and I don't think that hurdle's too big, right? First name, last name, email, maybe phone number. Right? I'm not giving you my email address. I'm not throwing in a credit card, you know, anything right. like that. It's like, here's what it is. And I know you're you're so good at gated content. We talk about it all the time. I have the flip side. I'm awful at it. We try to do it all the time. And man, I, I don't think I could fail any more at gated content. So maybe I need to talk to you a little more about that. We do it left and right. And I feel like, you know, different industry, right? I'm doing more B2B stuff. But man, if we can get like one or two, I get excited. You know, you probably get a lot more than I get. Yeah, our current piece, and I'm happy to talk about it. I think we're at like 791. Um, wow. So it, it, it's working. Um, but there's actually one other thing that I wanted to chat about with the digital experience, which I feel like you totally understand out of anyone, is rich media content. Yeah. So the importance of photography and video within that digital experience, I feel like is so key. As you had mentioned with like when you go to a restaurant, you know, I've noticed that I've recently been traveling to many different places that I haven't been. The first thing that I do when I go to book the restaurant or when I go to book the hotel is I look on their website. I look on their social media pages because I want to see a snapshot of everything before I get there. And that's how I make my decision. Yeah. I mean, that's just the information's out there. I'm going to go look at it. I'm, you know, do I like the aesthetic of it? Does it look good? Does the food look good? All these different things. And it's the same thing with your club, just like you're talking about these updated media. And like you said, pictures and everything that, you know, iteration of that technology jumps a lot every couple of years. So the same thing that you were shooting on, I, I made this comment the other day. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the club. I'm not going to, cause I'm not here to like throw people under the bus, but I was told that they use some really high tech drone gear to go and video their course. And then they uploaded it in 1080p. And I'm like, if you guys were able to shoot in four or eight K in this case, how did we only get a 1080p shot on there? And like, it does make a difference. Can you imagine having your golf course in eight K when everyone else is putting theirs up in 1080p? I mean, that's a huge advantage because when people go there, it's so clear, it's going to look different. Right. You know, and I, I think I, that, you know, even <laughs> what else is important is that you have to update it. It has to be part of your marketing budget to update it on a continual basis because yeah. people want to see that you're taking the time to update that on in the digital experience, on your website, on your social pages. It's something that just needs to be budgeted for. Yeah. And I think that's something that Northern clubs have a unique ability to do better than Southern clubs. And here's why. You can take pictures year round, but then you can update your pictures based on the season. And I think that's such a cool thing. Someone goes to your website in the fall. There's like the orange leaves and all that stuff. They go there in the winter. I know you don't want to show your golf course covered in snow, but you have the opportunity to do these different things. And I'm not saying a Southern club can't update and do things, but it's a really cool, unique thing about Northern clubs is that you can change your pictures with the seasons that I really love. That wasn't I some, I, it's something I learned until I came into the industry and I'm like, this is such a great idea. Like you should do this. I love that. Down in Florida, we try and do it based on like the seasons. So yeah. if it's the holiday season, we'll try and change some of the photography to reflect, you know, some of our um, Christmas events or holiday events, or we try and do it for like the 4th of July and things like that. But you are definitely right. The Northern clubs have an advantage with their seasons. It is, it is unique. Um, all right. So content creation at the club, you know, Whereas marketers and communication professionals, you know, where should we be spending our time when it comes to content creation? There's so much to do. What should we be focusing on? 
So they threw up some stats on and all different types of content um, at this conference that we were at. And they were, they did um, just a ton of research on what type of content people want to be consuming currently. And I'm sure it always changes. <laughs> but right now it is all about short form video. Oh, yeah. That's right. Where it's at. <laughs> so the, the videos that are under a minute, um, the videos that are, you know, even 30 seconds, you know, e even shorter than that, um, people are wanting to consume the content via short term video. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's just the trend, right? It's, you know, you can get into it back. Well, that's how people are. They don't have attention span, but that's where everything's going, right? TikTok is one of the most popular apps. And now Instagram does the reels and the stories. And I believe the limit on Instagram is 90 seconds. Yes. If I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. YouTube is 60. It's a lot tighter. Okay. If you do the YouTube shorts uh -huh. and then TikTok, you can just upload it. Like apparently you can upload like 30 minute videos now. So but this is where people are consuming it. They want it quick. They want the information. They want to move on to the next thing. Like it or not, it's the world we live in. So like you said, you got to be able to do something quick that's powerful and captures that person's attention and delivers a message you want to deliver it. And it's way harder to do that in 30 seconds than it is in 10 minutes. I'm sorry. And yeah. so that that's important. You have to be able to do that. So any, and you know, what have you guys done short form wise that's been really impactful? We um, have decided to take a little bit of a different approach this year. And it took, a, you know, we had to take kind of a, a couple of months off and get our creative juices flowing yeah. again. And we took a look at like our previous content and, you know, what we saw the most interaction with. And um, there were two um, kind of areas that we saw the most interaction, especially from our members currently of the club. That was um, behind the scenes. Um, was one of the things that the members and prospects really want to see. Um, so when we talk about behind the scenes, you know, we're talking about whether it's food and beverage and, you know, prepping for an upcoming event, um, whether it's getting the golf course ready in the morning, all oh, the yeah. hours that go into, um, you know, our grounds crew, getting that ready before somebody makes that first tea time at 8 a.m., um, and then another thing that, that we've seen just really popular and probably gets the most reach is featuring the staff, featuring the team. Really? So, you know, what I think this really rolls into and, and what I took back from the content, the conference is the importance of humanizing the brand. Yeah, that's, that's a good point right there is understanding the people behind it. People are going to like your club, especially if it's a nice club, but a lot of people interact with these people daily. And it's cool to see the behind the scenes or get to know them or see what they're doing on an everyday basis. You're absolutely right on the golf stuff. Every time I go to a course and we're doing drone photography or videography or anything, we always shoot. And I've shot this shot a million times. Them cutting a hole, moving it to a different location, you know, and doing the whole hole cutting process. It's so satisfying. Every time we post that video, it's the most popular video at every club we go to. Yeah. So if you're listening and you want an easy video because you can shoot that on an iPhone, do it, do it, put a little background music to it, but like leave kind of the noise of them, you know, cutting the hole. And if you never heard it, they kind of bang it down a couple of times and things like that. Leave that there. It's always the most popular video I've ever posted. Always. Yeah. 100%. <clears throat> I, I, we did it as well. And it was, it's gotten the most views out of anything. Yeah, you can do the, you know, and now I'm just throwing out like little tips and stuff. Uh, you you can actually put your iPhone down. It's always best to flip it upside down at an angle and then get the mower coming at you. Just don't get run over by the mower. Um, I don't need that lawsuit coming after this one, but it's always a good one. If you flip your iPhone upside down, it actually allows you to get it lower and gets a better angle. And then you can reverse the video later. So it's always a key thing that I learned a little trick was flipping the iPhone upside down because it lowers where the lens is on it. If you're thinking oh. about it like I am. So. Very cool. <clears throat> no, very Yeah, good. there's there's Kyle's tip of the day. Maybe the only yeah. tip I have in this entire episode, but it's there. No. Um one of the, the other <laughs> things they were talking about just when we were talking about um, you know, content is that they were talking about the importance of a content remix. Yep. Um, or repurposing your content. And I feel like, you know, especially a lot of the clubs that are departments of one, um, you know, we spend so much time, you know, putting together that email for our members, that weekly newsletter. Yeah. And we don't take the time to like repurpose what we're already doing. 
um, you know, into a social media post or into a blog or into a short form video. And I feel like that's one of the ways that we can just like maximize our creativity is going into that content remix. Yeah, this is so this is something I don't, I don't know if I'd call myself an expert, but I do it every day. Really? Once a week here at Capstone, we write a blog, uh, which is you know, it's a lot of work writing a blog every week because, mm -hmm. you know, the hardest part is thinking of the topic. We always repurpose that blog into an Instagram slider. And then at times we'll also try to make some kind of short form content video on it if we can, if we have time. And it, just like we would. OK, so this podcast will be the same thing. Right. We're, we're shooting the podcast. This will be a blog post because we'll repurpose it into a blog post. You can use AI to do that. I can pull the transcript out of this. I can say, give me the best five, you know, give me the top six points out of Kyle and Melissa's conversation. It'll give them to me. I'll write the blog post. Then I can turn that into a slider and I can do short firm content from it. I can go and clip these, these things, these tips that you're hearing from Melissa that are so valuable. And then we put those on Instagram. That's four or five things we've done just from shooting this one podcast. And honestly, it doesn't take that much time. So repurposing your content and, and remixing, however you want to call it, is the most important thing. Uh, it's, it's just easy. You know, uh, you can't spend hours. You know, we only have so many hours, right? You do sales, you do member onboarding, retention. I mean, Melissa, you wear 1,200 hats. You do not have time to create four or five videos a week or write three or four blog posts. I mean, maybe you do do this, but you really don't have that much time. And so it's important to repurpose all that content. And so I'm just curious if you have any tools um, that <laughs> you use that you could share with me <laughs> Yeah, that help you do that. So the first one is I hired an intern. No, um, we, <laughs> yeah. we did bring on an intern, which has been awesome. She's shout out to Rochelle. She's fantastic. Um, so we use a couple different ones and I know of a couple different ones out there. The first thing we use is a, when we do podcasts, we're using Riverside right now, super easy to create short form from. It actually gives me a transcript. I can just go highlight the words and hit make a clip and I can tell it to do a vertical or horizontal clip right there. So the podcast and making clips off that it's all in this one tool. I think we, you know, I think it paid 19 or 20 bucks a month for it. It is what it is. Like, first off, if you're using these tools, you're going to pay a little bit of money. Yeah. Uh, the second one is automating posting with, you know, a Hootsuite or a Zapier or something like that. If you make a video for Instagram, repurpose, you know, make sure it automatically posts to Facebook and all these other different forms and these platforms and media. Another one, if you do videos, is called repurpose.io. It's one of those AI ones. You can put long form content into it and it'll create you like a bunch of short form content. And I believe it'll post it for you as well. Wow. I have no idea what that costs a month. We don't use it because we we have a bunch of other things. We're able to automate it through those. But those are all big things. And I'm working on a way to process. Um, we do take our blog and we will put it through an auto. So anytime we post a blog, it's going to sound more complex than it is. It recognizes it in Zapier. It pulls it out. It sticks it in chat GPT and it creates the verbiage, the cut down version verbiage for an Instagram slider and kicks it back out to us in an email. That way we can now take that and put it into a template for an Instagram slider on Canva. Some wow. people automate that all the way through. I'm not good enough yet, but we're not getting yet. better and better at doing these things. And it's still genuine. And I still think it's good content because we're writing the blog, right? We're not AIing the entire blog. That's right. in case you're listening. It's terrible for your SEO. Don't do that. But you have to use AI to your advantage and lean into it. And I know we've talked about this. Those are all really good ways to do it. So if anybody has any questions with that, feel free to reach out with me. My email is kyle at capstonhospitality.com. I'm happy to talk to you about it. But there's a lot of different ways. And, and honestly, if you want to learn and you don't want to talk to me, which is fine, go on YouTube and just start start Googling. You will find it. And That's there's awesome. a lot of smart it's, people it's out so there that do tools. that. So many tools out there. <clears throat> but I never know, you know which ones people are using. But you guys' content remix is absolutely incredible. And we're getting better. Uh, the biggest problem I had was I had no time to make it at all. And now that we brought in another person in our marketing you know, department, because it was a department of one, now it's a department of two, which is exciting. When she's able to do these things, we're able to remix it a lot faster because now we have two people working on it. So that's the goal of 2025, right? Is like, can we do five, six, seven pieces of content every day? Yeah. Um, and I need to get better at LinkedIn, right? You are, you're the queen of LinkedIn. And every time I'm like, man, I need to be like Melissa on LinkedIn. So 
that's the next LinkedIn piece. Is how everything, do we, especially how do for we, our industry, LinkedIn <laughs> is where it's at. It is. 100%. And clubs and so we have are, to get better. they're getting really good. <laughs> um, clubs are, are, are getting great at getting themselves and their brands out <laughs> there. And I've worked with some clubs that are just saying that um, it's like their number one recruiting tool in recruiting the top talent yep. at their club because they're showcasing, you know, what they're doing, um, you know, with their staff, what what education conferences they are all attending together. Maybe they had, you know, a food truck come in and deliver everybody ice cream at the end yep. of the day and just showing that camaraderie. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn is definitely where it's at. It's hot lately. <laughs> Yeah. And like, listen, if you're listening and you don't know Melissa, just go follow her on LinkedIn if you want any tips, because she does a fantastic job. I'm absolutely jealous in the most like best way possible of of just admiration for her and what she does on, on LinkedIn. It's fantastic. Thanks. So, Melissa, you know, looking at it, I know you have a passion for email marketing. Is there anything new or, or anything that you learned at that conference when it comes to email communication? Definitely. So it, there was a lot about email, um, which again, yes, yeah, super passionate about email marketing. Um, I mean, <laughs> I think the stats kind of show themselves is that first of all, it's free. Um, yeah. yeah, you can get a paid version, but um, it's definitely free. And the return on the investment is just insane. Um, one of the things that they were really showcasing was the importance of personalization. Yeah. And we went into all this. And when you talk about personalization and email marketing, typically most people think, oh, it's like putting Kyle's name in the subject line. Like, <laughs> no. Kyle, here's your, you know, club newsletter. Yeah. No, that, that's, that, that's, you know, 20, 2015. Um, you know, we're not doing that anymore. It's fast forward. And what we're talking about with personalization is really, again, kind of humanizing the brand like we had discussed. But um, let's say most of the club newsletters they send out on a weekly basis is going to say, you know, Blackstone newsletter, Blackstone yeah. weekly newsletter. What they're saying and what they're suggesting is having that come from a person at the club. Yeah. Um, so say, for example, um, you know, Jonathan from the club at Old Cypress, Joe from the Old Cypress Pro Shop. It's connecting your members, your prospective members with somebody again at the club. And then when you are creating that email, um, you know, putting a headshot of whoever that email is coming at right from the, the top so that somebody who's receiving that email knows that they're getting this from an actual human instead of just the club. Um, so, you know, I've used it in the past, like messages from Melissa, you know, yeah. membership messages from Melissa or whatever, book an appointment with Melissa. Um, we're just seeing that the personalization with the email is, is just huge. Yeah. It's a lot better than getting one that's from no reply. That's my favorite. I'm well, like, that's, that's glad what I don't have any questions. Doing. That's what the clubs are doing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. I mean, it, it's like anything, like you said, it's, it's personalized. And it's not really humanized when it comes from no, no reply. But then it becomes a struggle if you really do have an important question or a question you want to ask of like, okay, what what do I do now? This is no reply. I don't even know who to contact. Correct. And I know this isn't club thing. Just a real world example. I We just built this house. It's a year down where, where our termite bonds up, right? And I just get this email from no reply and I have a question about it. And it's like, nope, go on and pay. And I'm like, no, I have a question. And I could not figure out who to ask the question to. Couldn't yeah. do it to Where the point where... Cool. To, to be honest with you, I, I went with a different company because I was unable to communicate with them. I was like, I'm just going to go with someone else. Wow. So, I mean, there's a great example there of now, maybe I took it to the extreme there by going with someone else, but you need to make it feel more personal. Make sure people can reach out and talk with you and communicate those things. It's so, so important when it comes to all really, of this marketing. <laughs> yeah. We're seeing um, such a lift in open rates when it is coming from somebody that they know at the club. Um, and even um, we've taken it as far as like creating little kind of like sub logos yeah. um, of doing like a little logo for the food and beverage, doing a, a, a logo for the racket sports. And so that way, when we're delivering those emails to the members, um, you know, it will pop up and they know exactly right from yeah. opening it right from the start. Is this something that I'm interested in reading? Oh, don't don't even get me started on alternate logos. I love them when they're done right. It awesome. is so awesome. I am, again, I'm one of those guys, I, I'm a graphic designer by trade, but I don't do logos. So I'm always jealous of good logos because uh, I can't do it. 
but being as smart as to make those, like you said, the sub logos or alternate logos for each piece of it, because really at a private club or a country club, there really are these different various departments that people are dealing with, right? I, in my experience, could be way different than anyone else's. I could be, right? I don't golf as much. I know that's weird to say, but I may go play tennis or pickleball. And so seeing, right, if I see an email from from the club, I may think, all right, here's another golf thing or whatever. But if I see it with a tennis racket or a racquetball or pickleball court, anything like that, right? I'm like, oh yeah, this is for me, right? I'm immediately yep. going to click on it. And you guys didn't do a whole lot of work. You you got a couple sub logos made, which is awesome. But just by posting that logo, I'm now interested. Yeah. You didn't have to do much there. So it's not like personalization is this really hard thing that you have to spend hours and hours and hours on. You just have to be smart about it. Yeah. And actually, <clears throat> one of the things that I've heard recently from a club is um, personalizing like the um, renovation process. Um, so that's become really popular. So, um, if you're getting ready to go through a renovation, like a lot of our clubs are, we are getting ready to, um, creating a alternate logo for renovation news so that Interesting. every single time that you're communicating whatever's going on with the reno, maybe it has your logo with a toolbox or a construction hat or something yeah. like that. Again, <clears throat> just so that it's recognizable and it's different from the weekly racket sports, um, email. That's cool. So I, I that's like something that. That, that we're going to be implementing here in the next couple of months. All right. So look, you're leading us down this path. So I'm just going with it. You got construction coming up, right? A renovation. Recently, I just wrote a long article on that. Um, that was in club and resort business and all that stuff. So and it was about when you go through it, you know, how you can maximize membership sales. And I'm not here to pub that. But part of the piece was talking about marketing during construction. Do you guys have a marketing plan for that yet? Are you in the process of building one? Like, How are you guys going to handle construction and renovation and marketing that? We are in the process of making one. Um, we've started some PR, but I'm here for all your tips. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, you know, you went there, so I was curious to ask that question. Um, but, you know, hey, listen, I, I get it. We can't share all the plans and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I had to try, right? I had to try. So, no, we're, we're really excited. Um, we are, we're definitely, you know, we're a little farther down the line. I don't think we're not, we're not starting till April of next year, um, but definitely have started putting a marketing plan in place. Um, obviously PR has been huge gathering the yes. renderings. Um, renderings are insane these days. Um, that looks like actual photography. Um, but I think also just adjusting your communication plan and letting your know, your members and prospects know what they can expect throughout the process is yeah. really crucial as well. Yeah. And so um, can I, can I ask what you guys, like, you don't have to give me specifics. Are you guys doing a golf course renovation or like facilities? Facilities. Okay, perfect. Um, so I always, you know, cause I always wonder, you know, what are people doing? If it's golf course, are you doing drone during the construction? Cause people love to see those videos. Are you doing different things, you know, it, without giving away too much, cause I'm not trying to press you. Are you guys going to try to do some kind of video of during construction and time lapse or anything like that? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's so important, especially when you have members or a club that's seasonal. And so typically a lot of these clubs like to do the renovations in the off season. So the yeah, members yeah. don't know what's going on. Um, I think that video is such an important component. Um, but if you do have any examples of clubs that have done it well, not to put you on the spot, you can definitely email me. I would love to kind of steal some of their strategies and make it my own. <laughs> I may or may not be helping a club with one right now, uh, mm -hmm. down, down South. So okay. they're in the, they're in the process. Um, so we're in the pro I, Melissa, I'm happy to share it with you once we, we get rolling on it. So we, we did the kind of before, but as we went down there it was like one of those times where it rained for five days straight. So like most of our photos were a wash for that place, even, even as before photos, because bunkers were full and things like that. So I was like, uh, but we are, I'm, I'm contracted to go down there three more times. So, uh, I'll definitely get with you and we can talk more about that. And if you're listening and you care, I'll probably write a blog post on it afterwards. So we'll make sure we get some some pub of that and 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 make sure, you know, we're out there. I'm here as a reference, so I don't mind sharing things. Um, I don't work at a club, so I'm a little different than Melissa. Obviously, she's very open and shares a lot of things, but she's bound by a club, which I am at this time. But when we're done with the project, I'm not. So I can share it a little more. So Super it's always up. <laughs> Just curious, are you adding anything to the website on... Um renovation updates? Yeah. So this particular club, without getting into it too much, they've, they've made the move from semi-private to private. Okay. 
So a lot of renderings have gone up on the website. We've used them now on Facebook ads, things like that, as we're starting to build that out. Um, so it's they're in the transition. They're already selling memberships. Renovations are all coming right now. So it's it's really interesting because we're doing it all at the same time. So there's a big transition from public to private. There's this transition of all these new facilities being built and us coming in getting assets for the first time. So it's really important to get the assets beforehand because we want to be able to, like you always tell storytelling, right? right. We want to tell the story of where it was to where it is now. And yep. why that's valuable for someone. If we can't show the before, it's the after looks great. But if you can't compare it to something, that's all they've ever known. They're like, hey, this looks really sharp. But like, wow, look where it's come from. It was here and outdated. And now it's here. And I'm not talking about this club in, in specific. I'm saying any club, right? Some clubs wait 10 or 20 years to do renovations. Mm -hmm. You know, they were super outdated at that point. Yeah. So I, I think that's really important telling the story and having all those different things. Plus, it's a cool thing to look back on. Some of those pictures people want to take and hang on the wall, tell the history of the club, all that. So it's like we talk about all the time. You should be updating photography and videography probably once every two to three years. At I'm not least. saying you have to do a huge project, but right. come in and get a photographer that you know at a decent rate. Or like you said, some clubs down south, you guys kind of have that deal where sometimes I think you pay X amount for, uh, you know, drone and photography or whatever year. Uh, you know, I know different clubs do that. Um, you know, it's whatever you have, you know, obviously I, I tell people, if you can get a photographer on retainer and get them there all the time, do it because it'll be the best thing for you. But I get not every club can spend money on that. So anyways, I kind of rattled on a little bit about that, but it's always interesting, you know, the different marketing of the aspects of that. So Melissa, you, you went to this, you know, you, you learned all these different things, you know, any kind of closing statements about the HubSpot conference or the inbound marketing conference by HubSpot up there? Um, I'm just definitely such an ambassador of continuing education in general, um, you know, whether it's within the industry, um, whether it's outside of the industry, I just, you know, I'm such an advocate for it. I think that it's so important. The people that you have the opportunity to meet, um, you learn so many different things and you can always take that back to the club and implement it to make it your own. Um, but I think that so many times, so often that clubs can really be behind when it comes to the yeah. marketing communications aspect. And, and we get kind of set in our ways. I mean, for me, I've personally been at the club for over a decade. Definitely, if I wasn't going to continuing education, it's so easy to get set into your ways and your routine and then what works. But I think more than anything that AI is is really taking over our world. And as a marketing professional, as a membership professional, if you take a moment to embrace it and you're not afraid of it, I think that your club can thrive in ways that it never has before. Yeah, that that's probably a whole different episode when we talk about AI. And I think people almost have like just listing about they have AI fatigue, but thinking about how it applies to you, right? Everybody talks about AI this and AI that, and you can do this and that, but taking it and pairing it down to what can help you on an everyday basis, it saves me hours a week, Same. hours. I mean, Same. so it, it is important in that. So, you know, I, and I agree with you on the education piece. The worst thing I hated when I went to a new place, whether it was, you know, no matter what I've done throughout my life is this is the way we've always done it. I hate that phrase because if you're not, you know, learning, if you're not trying new things, especially in marketing, you're not getting any better. Everyone else is trying new things. I think right now we're planning for 2025 because it's October by November one, we want to have it set. My general rule is look, we better throw at least five crazy ideas against the wall next year in 2025 to see what works. We yeah. may lose some money on them. It's going to happen. But if we find out that one of them is a home run and we're and we beat other people to the punch, mm -hmm. right? We we've got the secret sauce for at least a year before people catch up to us. So I, I think that's such an important piece. And I agree with you completely, Melissa. Staying on the cutting edge and just trying new things. And I think it keeps you interested and focused and having fun. It's fun. Doing the same thing every day is boring. I yeah. hate it. <laughs> 100%. It's fun. And I can guarantee that if you're not trying the new stuff at your club, that the club next door is going to try it and you are going to be inferior to your competitor for sure. Yeah. You, you don't want to be right. You want to be the trailblazer, not trailing. Exactly. You know, you want people to come to you to talk about it and all those good things. And it's always fun, right? If people are, Hey, what are you doing, man? It's excellent. It's got to feel good. All right. Yeah. It's got to feel good. So well, Melissa, thank you so much for coming on. Um, people can get a hold of you, melissahanson.com. 
uh, any other contacts, if, if you want to reach out to her on LinkedIn, you know, uh, obviously follow her on LinkedIn, all that good stuff. Any other pieces there that I'm missing? No. Um, yeah. <clears throat> shoot me a DM on LinkedIn. I would love to connect. I'm always on there in my inbox, my email, Melissa at Melissa Hansen.com. Um, but I appreciate you taking the time to get together and recap the conference. This was fun. Absolutely. You know, you're always welcome on this show. I love talking marketing. We talk so much membership sales that when we just want to talk about marketing, I get very excited. So it's <laughs> it's always a good deal. Uh, for Kyle, Melissa, we'll see you next time on the Club Innovators Podcast. <laughs>